Hey everybody, welcome back to the Texas Reloading Room. My name is Justin and today I want to talk to you about CNC. More specifically, the process that's going to be involved in me converting my mill into a CNC machine. So let's go take a look at some of the stuff that I've got in. So first maybe we should talk about what CNC actually is. CNC stands for computer numeric control. Basically what that is is that the computer is controlling a machine or whatever numerically. Now there's almost infinite combinations of things that you can do with CNC. Your 3D printers, those are CNC controlled. Uh, even something like uh, Cricut uh, vinyl cutting machines that a lot of people use for crafts and scrapbooking, those are two axis CNC controlled. The computer is feeding numerical data to that machine to make that blade move in a certain fashion, in a certain pattern. This is my Precision Matthews mill. I have 9 by 40 and a fair amount of up and down movement on this head. Right now, in order for me to use this, I have to come over here and turn these levers to move the table. So basically, my manual input in combination with either the numbers on these spindles here or the numbers on my DRO are how I get precise cuts but everything has to be done manually. This will move the Y, this will move the X, and I don't move the Z on this because I can't move the entire head up and down precisely on this machine. Instead, what I use for Z axis control is this. And this has its own digital indicator that I can use for accuracy down to approximately half a thousand. So that's not bad, right? Well, this can be better. My plan is to convert this into a three axis CNC machine and eventually I will add a fourth A axis over here, a rotary axis. But for now, we're going to be doing three axis and basically that means that I'll have a motor driving here, a motor driving here, and a motor driving the head up there that can be controlled precisely. Because right now, let's say I want to make a diagonal cut. I can't precisely turn both of my hands to get an exact 45 degree angle. What I would have to do is set up my part at a 45 degree angle and then use one axis to make the cut. Let's go to my bench and I'll show you some of the hardware that's going to make this possible. There's a few main components to a CNC machine. Apart from the machine, um, you've got the motors. And these motors are what control the movement of the machine. These are open loop stepper motors. What open loop means is that the computer will send a signal out and that will tell this motor to turn. But let's say the motor has a problem and it can't make all of its turn. There's no way for the motor to relay that information back to the computer which is why they call that open loop. Basically think of a rubber band that would be a closed loop, right? Put a cut in that and now you've got an open loop that is not a continuous transference of material. Works the same way with information. I think that open loop will be okay for my machine. I'm not going to run it hard. Most of what I'm doing is going to be relatively small, but eventually I would like to upgrade these to closed loop and that's going to have an additional thing on top of here with an additional feedback so it will be able to relay information back to the computer and the computer can correct for any missteps that happen. You can see I've got three of these. This one's a little bit bigger because this one is running the z-axis which is what the head is on and the head of the machine probably weighs about 400 pounds. 
the table itself does not weigh anywhere near that. So these 9 ounce motors are going to run the table X and Y and then this 12 ounce motor is going to run the Z. Now, how do we relay that information to the steppers? We use these stepper drivers. A um, lot of different ones of these, but basically what you do is you wire in you wire in your power down here and then your signal from the motors will be wired in here. And basically what this does is it transfers uh, energy into a certain amount of output. Okay, that's pretty much how that's pretty much how power works. Power is transferred in increments in order to get the desired result. So it'll transfer power from the stepper or it'll transfer power from the driver to the stepper to get it to turn an exact amount however much you want. Now these steppers are uh, 200 steps, 1.8 degrees per step. If you divide 360 by 200, you get 1.8 degrees. So if you put, if you tell this to move one full step, it will move 1.8 degrees. However much that means your table moves laterally. But this driver will allow you to break that down into smaller increments. So we can do what they call micro steps, right? You can send partial pulses. I'm not getting into a whole lot of that right now. We'll go over that more when we get to it. But it all comes with these nice little diagrams that will show you. This is a power supply. I don't know if we'll need all three of them to run the machine, but we'll just uh, we'll see how much power we need. Most of the time I see two of these. The motor kits that I bought, I went ahead and got power supplies with each motor, so I've got them if I need them. And here's these little breakout boards. I'm not sure if these are going to be necessary or not. You would probably use something like this in an old school setup. Um, alternatively, what we might be using these for is to run our parallel cable from the driver to this, and then this would be wired to the breakout board, which I don't have yet. Breakout boards, there's a lot of different ones, and it just depends on how much functionality you want with your system. Now another main component to a good CNC machine that a lot of people may not think about is the actual screws. So these packages just finally came in the mail today after, see I ordered these like the second week in November. Um, but it's not a huge deal. I didn't mind waiting on them because it's kind of a long and expensive process to set one of these up. So I'm buying things here and there a little bit at a time. This looks like it's probably the Z-axis screw. got to give it to him he packaged it well so he had that stuff packaged really well but what you can see here this is the heavy duty Z screw so that's basically going to mount like this and that's what's going to run this head up and down with that large 12 ounce stepper motor that's going to attach up here um, this is obviously going to go down through the back of this so I will have to take the machine apart to do all of this but so the z-axis screw here. This is the x-axis screw. So it'll go like this. The motor will mount on this side like this. Okay. And that'll just be fastened to that other end. Or whichever side I decide that I want to run the motor on, I don't think it really matters. We might put the motor over there. 
and then so this little piece in here one side of this will attach to the screw and the other side will attach to my motor my stepper motor and that bearing is just there to make sure that it's got nice and smooth uh, circular motion with no free play and here's the y-axis screw So these screws might look a little different than what you're used to. The screws that are in the machine right now are your standard uh, probably 60 degree uh, screw like you would see on any machining type screw. Um, this is a double ball screw and the reason that this is important for a CNC machine is because that standard screw that you find in a manual machine it has some slop in it. If it didn't have the slop in it, then the machine would bind up and it would you wouldn't be able to turn it. That's fine for a manual machine. You just have to uh, compensate for that by always turning in the same direction. If you need to go back, then you go back past the point and then you come back around again in the same direction that you've been turning. This kind of eliminates that. This carrier right here is what will mount to the table itself so this will stay stationary and the screw will turn therein moving this with the table the table will move attached to this and the double ball screw or the double ball assembly is in here and basically what that means is each of these little grooves has pressure put on both sides of it so there's none of that uh, backlash and take up in this screw like there would be in a traditional screw which is great that means you don't have to worry about the CNC machine having to compensate for any forward or back backlash incredibly important when you're automating your machining uh, for obvious reasons so we're not going to get into installing all this today there's still some stuff that I need to order and build up for this before we actually get into putting everything together. So the next step of this process is actually going to be purchasing the rest of the electronics that I need, the wiring and all that, and then we'll actually start wiring the box. We'll hook that up to the computer and make sure that functions and once I know that those steppers and drivers are going to function the way I need them to, then we'll start actually disassembling the machine and getting these screws set up. So that's an eye into a good portion of the hardware that's going to be required to get this mill converted to CNC. I'm still going to have to go through and order the actual CNC control board. Probably going to use the Centroid CNC Acorn board for that and the Acorn software. I may look around and look into some other stuff and see what I can come up with too, but Acorn seems to be my best bet for right now. If I want to change later, I can, and it's not a huge investment to get into Acorn. I think the basic starter setup is going to be about $300, which is perfectly fine with me. Then I'm just going to have to do the wiring, going to have to build a box to contain all of the hardware. So that's going to be another video. The next video is going to be probably us building the circuits themselves and making sure that the computer can control the steppers. And then the last step will be actually putting in the screws into the machine. That's going to be probably the better part of a day. And I'm going to leave that for last simply because if I change the screws before I get everything else working, then I can't use the mill. So if you guys have any experience working with stuff like this, holler at me down in the comments box below. Give me your suggestions and your ideas. But uh, until the next time, thank you so much for watching, guys. As always, if you're not subscribed to the channel, go ahead and click the subscribe button. Hit like if you enjoyed the content, and I'll see you in the next video.